we're in what used to be called the Crystal Gallery, which is in the new Hunterian Museum at the Royal College of Surgeons of England in Lincoln's Inn Fields. And we're standing in this extraordinary gallery, which contains almost all that's left of John Hunter's collection. When he died, he left about nearly 14,000 specimens. Sadly, during the Second World War, the college was hit and uh, a lot of the building was demolished and a lot of hunter specimens were burned and about three and a half thousand specimens remain. And what we're looking at is, is just this extraordinary collection of, of, of animal, plant, human material. John Hunter was a Scot. He trained uh, with his brother to teach anatomy, to dissect, and he is known today as the father of the scientific basis of surgery. So Hunter was particularly interested in comparative anatomy. It wasn't just looking at human anatomy, he was interested in comparing uh, the differences and the similarities of all living things to see where they actually, if there was a, if there was a connection between a hand or a fin of a, of, a, of a fish and how these all related in nature. There's so many extraordinary things in this collection and it's difficult to pick any. I don't, I don't have favourites as such and the, you can see things um, some of the oldest anatomical preparations in Europe. They date from the 1640s and they're called the Evelyn Tables, where the blood vessels, the veins and the nerves of the human body have been dissected out and pasted onto pine wooden boards. This is one of the examples where, where John Hunter was treating a patient and he had to find a different way of, of treating a particular condition called a popliteal aneurysm. Now the popliteal artery is the artery at the back of your knee and an aneurysm is a swelling uh, on, an, on an artery. The wall becomes weaker. Uh, it was quite common with coach. Uh, coachmen, for example, they wore very high boots and the boot would rub at the back of the knee and, and this swelling would develop on the, on the artery at the back of the knee. And to treat it was, was almost impossible. And he already knew that a, a large vessel like the femoral artery, which is the artery at the top of your thigh at the front, that has a lot of branches going down into the leg. And so he knew that if he tied off one vessel, there would be other vessels, other branches that could carry on supplying the rest of the leg. So he had the idea of tying tying off the artery much higher up in the thigh. And what we see here is, is one of the, there, there is a, one of the popliteal arteries. You can see a specimen of injected artery that has been taken out obviously after death. And at the back is a dissection of the leg of a coachman who actually died about 50 years after his operation. So this is an example of Hunter having an idea, a way in which he could improve clinical treatment of a condition with a sound scientific basis for that. and. Uh, it was successful. I think he did it four or five times. Today, of course, looking at an aneurysm, we can the aneurysm is treated with a small incision in, in, in the inguinal region. And then you just push, I say you just push, a, a catheter with a stent is pushed up through the vessels until you get to the aneurysm. And you can treat it entirely internally. And the person come, leaves hospital uh, with a tiny scar. The skeleton of Charles Byrne is probably John Hunter's, one of his most famous specimens. Charles Byrne was an Irish giant and Burns skeleton has been on display in the Hunterian Museum for the best part of 200 years. When the museum closed in 2017, the Hunterian trust trustees thought, thought this through um, and are aware of the sensitivities of the continuing the, the display of Burns skeleton and made a decision that it should come off display and shouldn't be in the new Hunterian, but should be kept uh, for bona fide medical research into pituitary gigantism. I think for anyone coming to the museum, they should really just enjoy the immersion of um, a, sort of a, a sort of a tribute to the natural world. And that's what Hunter wanted us to understand, is that, that humans are part of, the very, uh, uh, of all the natural world. I think that we can learn a lot about how we treat the environment, how we treat others that use this world. Sheer breadth of the animals, the species with which Hunter worked. And before so many were destroyed, of course, it was even greater. Quite extraordinary. <laughs>